loves, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a second come book shopping with me in Edinburgh video. Unlike the first one, this has been filmed over the course of a couple of days because I couldn't quite make it to all of them in one day. So you would be able to if you really wanted to, they're not too far away from each other. And I will of course leave a link to the first video down below because in that video I showed a few of my favourites that I tend to go to most often. So in that one you have Golden Hair Books, Rare Bird Books, Toppings and Company and Hype Ronga. In this one however, we're going to be covering some well-known ones. So we have Waterstones, Blackwells, Armchair Books and Lighthouse Books. There will also be a part three to this video at some point. I don't know when because it's going to take even more planning but for this one I figured I would add a bit of a voiceover as well to tell you more about the bookshops themselves as well as any thoughts that come to mind that I think might be interesting and I will of course show a little bit of a book haul towards the end of the video so I hope you enjoy. Let's go book shopping! <laughs> In a very stereotypically Scottish fashion, it was incredibly stormy the day that I filmed this and coffee was absolutely needed for the journey so I went for a quick pit stop to a coffee shop and was on my way to Waterstones. This is the Waterstones on Princess Street and is quite famous for its view of the castle. This bookshop has quite a few floors, I think there might be four of them? And when I went on this day, the January sales were still on, so I had a good old peruse around those. I find this Wadstones quite interesting actually because it has a conflict of design. The floor that you walk in on has a more modernised version, whereas the rest of the floors seem to have kept the older Wadstones style of having a neutral tone carpet and dark shelves, which to me seems incredibly nostalgic because that's the way I've always known Wadstones. And for a long time, Wadstones was the only bookshop in my hometown, so this to me just screams come that being said, I do think the fantasy section of this Waterstones is very much the same every single time I come in. It's quite uncommon for me to find books I haven't heard of before. And this time round I did also have a little look at the manga section because this is the only bookshop I know that has quite a large manga selection. And when I think of Waterstones, I think of the displays that they tend to have out, the ones with fantasy favourites or dedicated spaces to Scottish fiction. This one tends to be quite a common thing in Edinburgh bookshops, which you can't really Really blame them for. So then we have Blackwells which I believe is the oldest bookshop in Edinburgh. I feel like Blackwells always looks quite unassuming from the outside but I actually really love it for its selection. Again this is a pretty huge shop, it goes quite far back and has multiple floors. Like Waterstones there is also a cafe in here, I haven't been in there myself but I just know it exists. Personally when it comes to the bigger chain bookstores I feel like this Blackwells is the best in terms of selection because I feel like I can always 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 find what I'm looking for in here and even things that I wasn't looking for but have never seen before in a physical shop and that makes me really excited. <laughs> Again the displays in here I absolutely love, there are so many bookseller recommendations and every single time I've walked in this bookshop I've overheard the booksellers talking about fantasy books. And then we have the infamous Armchair Books. Armchair Books is a tiny secondhand bookstore which does not have a single inch of space that is lacking a book. It's basically a small maze of books and it's just a whole experience to walk through even though it is such a small place but it is well worth a visit. I really love coming in here to look at all of the old editions of fantasy books and I also find this one quite quirky for the signs that it has dotted around because you can tell that the booksellers who own it and run the place have a little bit of sass to them so this place is really full of personality and I think that's why so many people love it. And this room holds the antique books so when you walk in here there are tons of old old, old books. And then finally we have Lighthouse Books which is known as the Radical Bookstore which I think puts some people off because it sounds like it only sells books that have an agenda to them but that's not the case, it's more just that it highlights things that you might not have done beforehand so this one I don't necessarily come in so much if I want fantasy because they do have a smaller selection but what I will say is that the selection is quite often a lot more diverse than some other stores so I do really like it for that and this bookstore does also have a bookshop dog which is just adorable and kept following us around. They have shelves dedicated 
dedicated to queer fiction or feminist fiction. They also have a lot of non-fiction and so many different subgenres and themes within that. So this bookstore again almost has two separate rooms and I believe that one of them is arranged by genre and one of them is arranged by theme. So for instance if I wanted to find a sapphic fantasy book I could look both in the fantasy section and the queer fiction section and probably find it in both. And I really love that they do that because there are so many books that you just wouldn't realise had that kind of representation inside it. And so I think it's a really good way to find that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, so. We have a book haul. <laughs> I got five books during these bookshop trips, which I don't actually think was too bad. So the first bookshop I went to was Waterstones and from this one I did have a gift card. So I ended up getting these books for a very discounted price. Here I ended up picking up Junji Ito's Deserter, which is a horror manga. And I was very excited to find this in there because I have been trying to get hold of this book for a little while now, but it's always sold out online. It can be quite hard to get hold of specific mangas at the minute. So finding this, I was just like, yes, get it. <laughs> I honestly don't know too much about this one, I just wanted it because it's Junji Ito, but it says a vengeful family hides an army deserter for eight years after the end of World War II, cocooning him in a false reality when the war never ended. A pair of girls look alike, but they're not twins, and a boy's nightmare threatens to spill out into the real world. It's literally it. <laughs> but I imagine I'm going to enjoy it and very excited to add more manga to my collection. And I also ended up picking up Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. Now I have been debating whether I want to read this book for a while now because it's a Greek myth retelling but it's also historical fiction which I haven't read too much of. Fun fact it used to be my second favourite genre. I used to read historical fiction so much and I just haven't touched it in years. And it's not necessarily something that appeals to me now but oftentimes if it's combined with something I do end up enjoying it so I'm hoping that I'm going to enjoy this because of the Greek myth aspect. I am a little bit dubious about how much of a retelling this is but it says it was set in 1799 in London following a woman called Dora <laughs> who is an aspiring jewellery artist who lives with her uncle in what used to be her parents famed shop of antiquities. When a mysterious Greek vase is delivered, Dora is intrigued by her uncle's suspicious behaviour and enlists the help of Edward Lawrence, who is a young scholar. Edward sees the ancient vase as key to unlocking his academic future. Dora sees it as a chance to restore the shop to its former glory and to escape her nefarious uncle. But what Edward discovers about the vase has Dora questioning everything she has believed in her life, her family and the world that she knows. As Dora uncovers the truth, she starts to realise that some mysteries are buried and some doors are locked for a reason. So I do think that it sounds like quite a interesting take on Pandora's story. So I've heard good things, I'm intrigued, we'll give it a go. Then from Blackwells, I picked up a couple of books, which I was very happy to see because I haven't seen these in any physical store yet. So I have already shown these in videos, so you might not be surprised to see these, but the first one I picked up was Extraordinary by V.E. Schwab. This is the graphic novel that goes directly in between the two books in their villain series so far. I have already read this one. I read it in January, so I'll leave a link to my January wrap up down below because I had quite a few different thoughts on this one, but I think it was a really good graphic novel and I was glad to get it because I love the villain series and I think that this was just a nice little trip back into that world for those who had been missing it because we're still waiting on book three within that series. <laughs> and then I did also pick up The Witchling's Girl by Helena Coggan. This one I was so excited to see because I've been trying to remember the name of this book since October. <laughs> I saw this in someone's video, I couldn't remember anything about it or even whose video I'd seen it in. All I could remember is that it was something witchy and the cover was blue and purple and I just happened to see it in Blackwells and was just like that. I'm buying it right now. <laughs> what is this lighting doing? And again, I'm gonna read the synopsis just because this instantly had me intrigued because this one says, in a quiet street far from the river with an ancient tree growing through its walls and floors is the house of the dead. There lives the witchling, healer, midwife, and conduit between the world of the living and the world below. A witchling must give up her family and friends and spend her life alone, tending to the sick and carrying the dead down dark tunnels to the underworld. Haley was born with the gift of death magic and at the age of seven, her mother abandons her to the witchling to be raised as her successor. But as Haley grows older and learns her craft, as invading armies pass through her town, people born and die on her floor, and loyalties shift and dissolve around her, she finds it harder and harder to keep her vows and be the perfect and impassive healer. But if she can't, it will be her downfall, and that of everyone she's not supposed to love. I'm excited. I love witchy stories. I am just so here for this. Super glad to have found it in Blackwells. I feel like Blackwells is always the place to go if I'm looking for like a, a book that I haven't seen in any other store. Blackwells usually has it. 
And then I didn't know whether to include this book because I actually got this one from Type Ronga, which wasn't one of the ones I showed in this video, but that was in part one. That is linked down below, but I thought I'd show it anyway. One, because I love Type Ronga as a whole, and two, because this book is just beautiful and I think a lot of people would really like it because this one is a compendium of witches. The author of this one basically records, I think it's 29 witches within history and has illustrated this in the most beautiful way. Pretty much every single page has some kind of illustration on it. And I just saw this and immediately needed it. So I reserved a copy and went to pick it up during one of my trips. And I just think that this is genuinely one of the most beautiful books that I own. I just cannot get over it. I really cannot wait to read this. It looks so fascinating and yeah. I am so glad to have got this. I'll leave a link to the author's Instagram down below as well because I became obsessed very quickly and I think if you're anything like me, share any of my interests, then you might too. But that is it for this book shopping video. I feel like this was quite a quick one, but hopefully it gave you an indication of what you can expect from some of the bookstores here or just was interesting to watch. Have a little snoop around. As I said, there will be a part three coming, but I don't know when, but just stay tuned. <laughs> Tell me which of the four bookstores that I showed up within this video that you would like to visit. I have a feeling I know which one will be the favourite. And if you made it this far into the video, then leave any kind of bookish emoji down below. But for now, I shall love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.